That's always been there. But this notion of stasis, where there was no significant change in the number of movements, in the number of members, bodes very poorly. Uh, if anything, we, as I said, we should be exploding at this time. Uh, so we have loss of interest of the present membership, and we have, as was mentioned several times earlier, no reason for others to join us in significant numbers. There is no reason for Republicans to defect from their party uh, because there are conservatives galore uh, in the Republican Party. At least they say they're conservatives, and I have no reason to disbelieve them. Uh, we are talking to dinner last night, and it occurred to me that the archetypal conservative on the, in the Republican Party is Rick Santorum. Rick Santorum <laughs> really is a conservative. I hate everything he stands for. <laughs> but he at least actually wears the appropriate label. The notion that his followers are going to wake up one day and say, you know, that guy Root, that, could, that who identifies himself, by the way, as a, a, a libertarian conservative, that's really more what, that's my style. I'm going to, Rick Santorum, he was okay, but now I'm going to go over uh, to the Libertarian Party. We are insane if we think that large numbers of people are going to do that, even if we wanted it to happen. Uh, it's insane to think that true uh, conservatives, as that term has become to be known in the Republican Party, are going, or, as, or as Rothbard called it, the right, are going to shift to the Libertarian Party uh, because uh, they're somehow fooled into thinking that we're the true conservatives. It's just not going to happen. Instead, they're going to support one of the umpteen conservatives in the, that currently exist in the Republican Party. Well, uh, can the Libertarian Party rally uh, and avoid that fate? Well, of course they can. People have free will. Uh, things can change tomorrow. Uh, the Berlin Wall came down. Uh, anything could happen. Uh, and. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a call to action time, I think, rather than a give up time. This is, this is now, now I'm in the glass half full mode. Uh, things can uh, change. In 1960, uh, the year before Rothbard was writing that, uh, that memo, uh, Barry Goldwater uh, showed up at the Republican convention that year, and he was speaking for the subgroup of then self-identified conservatives, and he made a speech essentially a concession speech about uh, how uh, Nixon was going to get the nomination. And uh, he entitled it, Grow Up, Conservatives. And what he meant by that was, uh, it's time to redouble your efforts, move forward, come up with a strategy, and try to take over this party, which he did four years later. Uh, and that movement over a long period of time culminated in the Reagan presidency and now the current dominance of the Republican Party by conservatives. There aren't any liberal Republicans anymore. I know I'm speaking in New England, and maybe you got a uh, Susan Collins and uh, her, uh, her uh, Senate major's name. I've forgotten right now. Olympia Snow. Olympia Snow. Okay, all right. Forget them. Uh, <laughs> and you can go the whole rest of the country, and there aren't. There's no Jacob Javits anymore. There's no. There's no. There's no liberal Republicans out there. It's gone. Uh, they've completely been taken over by the self-identifying conservative Republicans. Of course, there aren't any conservative Democrats either. So there's been a realignment that's taken place, and we have to face that. But Goldwater was able to motivate a cadre within the Republican Party to essentially take it over by telling them to wake, wake up. So in that sense, it, maybe it's time for a wake-up call for the Libertarian Party. Uh, the problem is the Republican Party was going to go on regardless. They were part of a duopoly, uh, and uh, we all know how this works. Uh, it flows toward the Democrats, flows toward the Republicans. Democrats, Republicans, that's, that's the only two games in town for most people because of the wasted vote phenomenon that was referred to earlier. That's not true with the Libertarian Party. I cannot guarantee you, and nobody in this room can guarantee you, that this is going to be a viable party four years or eight years from now. It could simply cease to exist. Now, what are my positive, now that I've been uh, uh, so negative, what are my positive ideas about how to move forward? Well, I have some. Number one. Uh, this party has to recognize that the re its revival starts at the state and local levels. Uh, in fact, it starts in places like this room, uh, because that's where the true power and energy of this par party is, the Libertarian Party. It's not 
uh, at the Watergate or wherever they're holed up now. It's not in LMC meetings. It's here. That that's where the power is, and that has to be that has to be understood and adopt and understood at the national level. The national level should be looking at how to how to foster, how to support, uh, and how to uh, give aid to. I don't mean monetary aid, but how how can they facilitate uh, localism as opposed to figuring out you know what the shape of the table at the, the next LNC meeting is going to be and and, uh, and that sort of thing. So it's a bottom-up uh, focus. It's also a more radical focus. Uh, I have repeatedly observed, and my guess is most of you have also, that at the local, state and local level, the membership of the Libertarian Party is much more radical than it is at the national level. And that's always been true, as far as I can figure out. Uh, that means if there's going to be a revival, it's going to be a more radical revival uh, than could be done simply by a top-down uh, 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 command. Uh, at the state and local level, for the most part, uh, the organizations are uh, unencumbered by the power by power lust. By uh, uh, there's minimal potential for corruption because nobody has any money at the local level, so there's not a lot of corruption. There. Uh, it's not overly politicized in the bad sense, uh, and there's very little cronyism. Uh, now that's these are generalizations, and I know that there are exceptions to that on a state-by-state -state basis, or a local, local, locality by locality basis, but things change, can change more radically and more rapidly at the, at the state and local level than they can come at the national level, which seems to be stuck in the mode that they've been in for the last 10 or 15 years. It's also easier for individuals to enter. Uh, there's no barrier to entry into become an activist at a local level. There's no state party, I could say this, I'd, uh, with, with, without fear of any contradiction, if you sh anybody shows up tomorrow at any uh, state or local libertarian party function and says, I want to volunteer to do something, uh, they'll be put to work very quickly. Uh, I'm not sure it works that way at the national level. Uh, at the national level, there's a more, well, keep your distance here. Uh, we've got a structure in place, and we've got a director for this and a committee for that, and we'll get back to you if you think, we think you, you can help us. Oh, you can send us a check. But we'll take the check, we'll cash the check, but as to your, your activities, well, I don't know. Maybe you want to go down and talk to your local affiliate. So there's, a, there's an arm's length sense there. Not so at the state and local level, and that's a good thing. Uh, it's also easier for the local, state and local organizations to become active. You can put things into play instantly. Uh, you can go out and make signs, you can do protests, you can do outreach on college campuses, you can do public events. Uh, you can do protests of various types. You can write to the newspaper and get it published. You can uh, uh, do op-ed pieces. Uh, it's pretty easy to get into the local media. There's one or two ways to do that. You can uh, you can be make nice to them and and eventually and become friends with them, or you can be a real jerk. Uh, either way, you get some print. Uh, you, they may not be equally uh, efficacious uh, methods, but either way will work. The national level, not so much. Uh, it's very difficult, my guess is, for the Libertarian Party to get on to, when's the last time you, you saw anyone from the Libertarian Party quoted on any of the major news media networks, uh, ABC, NBC, CBS? I, I can't even remember the last time that occurred. I'm it's, working on it. Okay, well, <laughs> keep working. Uh, <laughs> but it's hard, is it not? At the, na at the national level. The local level, you, have a, you, have, you can get purchased more easily. Also, you have issues you can work on, like initiative, referendums depending on what state you're in, uh, and you can get involved in local issues, as Dr. Ruick was talking about earlier. Uh, I'm sure it took a lot of work, but it would, it, 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 what she did uh, really in Kalamazoo was a doable thing. It was an achievable objective. Here's an issue. It's a tax uh, issue. The public's on our side. Let's figure out how to organize this. Let's do it. Uh, and that could be done at that level. Very difficult to do on the national level. And, and get traction. The second thing is we have to honor and encourage those activists. Uh, sometimes it seems as if the National Party is involved in sort of suppression of local activity because it's going to be somehow embarrassing to them or it doesn't fit in their mode of branding uh, or uh, somebody's not dressed right or whatever. Uh, whatever it is, they, you know, they, they want to keep it down as opposed to encouraging it. Uh, we have to understand that the local, state and local, the individuals involved in those organizations are in fact the lifeblood uh, of the party. 
They're always more radical and more consistent. Uh, and uh, the uh, and I would suggest the following in terms of I don't mean to be given campaign advice to people who are running for uh, for office uh, for national office, but the truth is this: uh, we don't have a coattails effect uh, like the national parties do. Uh, you know, when President Obama shows up uh, in uh, a, a Democratic uh, state to campaign, all the local uh, Democratic politicians cluster around him so they can be in the same shot. Uh, be on the news that night, etc. It helps them because whatever goodwill he has flows to them and helps them in their local races. We don't have that at all. We've got the reverse. If you run, if you run for dog catcher as a libertarian, you will be guaranteed to get a higher vote percentage than whoever it is who's going to run for president of the United States, the Libertarian Party ticket. So it's reversed. Why is that? Well, part of it is the wasted vote phenomenon. People are so adverse to wasting their vote, uh, that they will only do it if they think it's meaningless. Uh, so if it's for dog catcher, they'll say, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and vote for the Libertarian to make my statement. President of the United States, ooh, I don't want to waste my vote, so I'll vote for the Republican or the Democrat. That's the way it works. So the, revo so the vote totals are, are a reverse pyramid in that regard. Well, how to take advantage of that? How to take advantage of that is the presidential candidates ought to be coming to the lo localities of the states and deliberately reaching out to, to those local candidates. It ought to be, instead of the local candidates clustering around the national figure, it ought to be the reverse. The, na the presidential candidate ought to be clustering around the local figures who might be known uh, because there's a lot of uh, goodwill out there and a lot of recognition of good local libertarian candidates. They may not be winners at the at the polls, but they are known locally, they get published, they're known to the media, etc. It's our national candidate who's unknown, and he or she ought to be coming to the locale. The whole campaign ought to be a, like a whistle stop of local races, with the national candidate getting some press building, getting some, pre uh, some, uh, some press access, and encouraging the local candidates, so and embracing that local candidate, and getting them into the same uh, uh, the same shot that appears, hopefully, on the front page of the local paper the next day. Third, we have to understand that there is no contradiction between upholding libertarian ideals and addressing contemporary political issues. In fact, they should be joined together. Uh, we should take issues, the current issues of the day, head on and not put them off with states' rights gibberish. So we should be, should we, for instance, on war issues, we should be addressing the war. We should be addressing the Bill of Rights issues that are, that are on top of us on a daily basis. The social issues that I referred to earlier, uh, gay rights, drug prohibition, uh, and the economy. Uh, and you know, we should be offering new and different ideas. Uh, the stimulus pa packages that everybody hates, uh, Republicans hate that too. They're all, they're, they're now, even though they voted for them, they're out there talking about how horrible these stimulus packages. They didn't work, etc. But they have no, no uh, alternative to that. The Libertarian candidates ought to be saying, you know, let's do some real stimulus. Let's have a tax holiday for a year. Nobody pays any taxes for a year. That would stimulate the economy. You'd see pe people out. They'd have more money to spend. More people would be employed, etc. All right, is that a, is that a viable idea? Is that going to win the day? not going to win the day, but it's going to start people thinking about the, econ about the economy and the economics of the situation. Go out there, press it, be, as Ernie talks about, the point of the spear. Be the person with the most radical idea. Not, do not try to conform to what the public is used to hearing from Republicans and Democrats. That doesn't differentiate you at all. In fact, it's not very pragmatic uh, to do that. Never hide our ultimate goals. We want freedom in our lifetime. Uh, and that is more than merely smaller government, lower taxes, uh, and uh, uh, more freedom, which is, the, I think, guess that's now the, the mantra of the National Party. We want freedom, and we're going to get there. Anything on along the way is an interim step, and we, we will advocate for those interim steps. We ought not to hide what we're going for in the long run. Uh, the platform ought to be restructured, and this is, my, this is a personal thing. Uh, not watered down, but refocused, uh, and what we ended up with after 2006 was, quite frankly, a disgrace. And we need more literature. Somebody mentioned how awful the web page is. 
I, don't under, I cannot even fathom how we got into this situation with the lousy webpage.